Hello everyone, this is Sirius Trivia. Welcome back to another early game playbook video, and today we're featuring Koron, the Master Scholar. So our old guide for Koron was a tall build guy where you stayed around the Shandong Peninsula over here and expanded into a few commanderies and just remained tall. That is definitely a viable strategy even on patch 1.5.2, which we are recording on. But the best way to play Koron is actually just to flee south, because you do start out in quite a chaotic situation next to the central plains and Huang Shao is going to attack you very very early on and we showcase how to beat him back now, it's not that hard but you're just going to have a lot easier time if you escape down south take control of some of these port commanderies and slowly build up from here and you'll be able to maintain some trade route and grow a little bit slower but you're going to be uh, less stressed out in the early game so let's take a quick look at his faction. Uh, not much have changed. He still has population growth on his uh, background bonus, which is great because the population bonus is now extended to all income sources. So this applies to his culture income that you can acquire on his school building chain. So that's actually a huge buff with the way population works now. And he still has the 50% trade influence. Faction specialization wise, he has trade monopoly. You gain this by issuing trade monopolies, which is Coron's special version of trade routes, and you're able to just acquire this to boost your trade influence. Uh, you also can uh, increase your trade influence with population, so that's why population growth is a key a thing for Coron. And speaking of population growth, you also have this education program assignment. This gives you the standard 75% from commerce income, as well as 3k population in local county. And Characters from any class can use this assignment. So this makes commerce commanderies for Coron very, very good. And you can build a population just by spamming this assignment as well. Uh, his faction unique unit, the Fury of Beihai and the Thunder of Jian, are still very strong crossbow units. They don't have the amazing 250 range, but they were not nerfed to 200 range either. They remain at 220, which is a decent amount of range advantage that you need. Because previously, even though 250 is better, 220 allows you to outrange most archer unit, except for onyx dragons. So you'll still be able to use them in sieges by outranging the enemy range defenders and wiping them out. So they're still excellent units in the game. You have the unique school building chain that gives you population growth, income from all sources, plus public order. And at the final tier, you get some culture income as well. He is a governor faction, so you're not going to be declaring yourself as emperor. Uh, that is not really going to bother our gameplay. The one thing that's really weak about Koron's faction is you start out with no noteworthy characters. I mean, it says Wang Xiu over here, the righteous hero, but his bonuses are really not that great. And we'll be actually firing everyone in our court at the start of the game because none of them are good. And we're migrating for the first eight turns or so. So there's really no need to keep them. And in terms of our migration route, we're going to cut through the Shandong Peninsula over here to save some time and land into the water somewhere over here. And then we're going to sail all the way down to here, to Hoguan. Uh, so there is an empty commander here in, uh, I think this is Dongwu. But we don't need to go here because we'll be next to a lot of different factions. Now you might think you get trade routes, but because you're migrating and you have lost all your land and units because uh, you're disbanding them, people will just declare war on you like crazy if you land right next to them. So it's better off if you start somewhere in the middle of the empty land here. Uh, you get a full commandery here that has a livestock farm for some food. Uh, you have access to uh, the Taiwan if you want to colonize that. And just leave these commanderies for Wang Long to colonize. And then you can fight him and take it back. And then slowly build trade routes with factions that you have seen from before over here. Uh, it's going to take you a while to build up your trade monopoly with this build. But you'd be mainly uh, building up your commanderies in the early stages anyways. And probably expanding deeper into the south as you continue your campaign. So with that said, uh, we're going to jump in here on Legendary, Legendary 40 minutes. See you guys in the game. Alrighty, uh, we're loaded up into the game. Uh, Lord Coral, chaos surrounds you, indeed. The Yellow Turban Rebellion spreads like wildfire through your land. You must snuff them out. You must then act to bring an end to Dong Zhuo's greed, and the Han falters as his grand treason tears the land apart. Liu Bei, an honorable man, could be a firm ally as you build power against the tyrant. The time is now, my lord. China has great need of your wisdom. Defend against yellow turbans, be wary of Yuan Shao. Not doing any of that, we're running away from the chaos that surrounds us. We will, however, do the first two missions where we have to engage the yellow turban army in front of us. So, 
let's first take a look at the situation. Uh, if you want to stay in this area, uh, Beihai right here near the Shandong Peninsula, go check out our old guide. Uh, that guide still applies. Uh, there's some minor number changes with the salary and some of the balancing with the unit. But overall, you can still defend in this area and build tall if you want. Uh, in this case, we got quite a haul of items, two common, two bronze. Could be better if we got a silver, but it's all good. Uh, we don't need to do any diplomatic deals in the beginning because as you can see, we are surrounded by all sides with enemies, so there's no trade deal. But if you want to trade items, Tao Tian is the only one that you see early on who is not your enemy. So over here, uh, you can, ooh, wow. Okay, so he got silver weapons for days there. That's a little shocking. Uh, these are quite good. Weapons are very, very good uh, things to trade for in the game. Uh, you can definitely try to trade for them if you want. They're not going to be game breaking for you in the beginning because you're not actually fighting anyone. Um, so we're not going to do any deals in this guide. But if you see items you like, maybe a concubine, maybe a philosopher, go for it. Uh, so a quick discussion about Coron's faction, what makes him unique uh, before we jump into the game. Here's our trade monopoly. Goes from 0 to 500, 500 a tier. Uh, 100 a tier, pretty standard. And each tier you gain additional uh, trade mo uh, trade monopoly points. Uh, will decay later on. Okay, let's talk about this. So you get trade influence points as you tier up, right? Zero during tier one, 25 during tier two, 50 during tier three, uh, 75, and finally 100. Each army you have on the field will reduce your faction-wide trade influence by 35%. So you don't want to have too many armies if you're in the mood to make money. Right, that will reduce your trade influence, which is an income multiplier for your trade value. The decay you see here, market force, trade monopoly, is a decay to the points that you're trying to acquire. Trade monopoly is the name of your resource, and you can gain these by issuing trade monopoly with other factions. Trade monopoly is just another term for Coron's trade agreements. So you can offer a trade agreement or a trade monopoly as Coron, similar to how you can vassalize or cooperate as Liu Biao, or you can vassalize and subservice uh, as um, Yuan, Shao, Yuan Shu. So there's just different versions and you want to use your faction unique version to acquire these points. And uh, we'll try to do that near the end of this guide. It could be very difficult for you to get trade deals in the beginning as Coron, just simply because you're leaving uh, and you're losing all your land so you don't have a capital at the beginning. But the first thing we're going to do is actually just jump into this fight here. We'll be delegating all of these. Now there's only one minor uh, move to make right here to try to speed up your process of migration. So we didn't capture him. If we had, we would be releasing him for extra money. Want us to capture the livestock farm here, which we will do. Uh, we want to cut across this peninsula to save travel time. So we kind of want to get Cornwall over here as quickly as possible. What we're going to do to uh, speed ourselves up is actually split Coral away from this army. This way, he doesn't get stalled for capturing a county, so he can move a little bit farther this turn. So over here, we can't beat them with a delegate because we don't have Coral's army here. And we're going to move Coral right up to the road here. Now we can delegate for the win. All right, pretty simple. So here you have a level one uh, livestock farm. If you don't want to rush Coron down as fast as you can, you could definitely sack and withdraw, which would burn down the uh, settlement to level zero. And then Coron's army, which still has movement, can just pop in and take it. You get 900 more income. Uh, if you keep the level one livestock farm, you can probably get about four turns of income, maybe five turns of income out of it before you lose it. So you definitely end up making more money this way. Uh, we'll kind of showcase it. It'll just slow your uh, migration down by a turn, which I think is worthwhile because you're not really rushing down there for anything. Alright, so you see we beat it. We burn it to the ground. It's level 0 now, so Coron can just walk in, take it. And when you take it here, you see they have no more money left because you took everything. So it actually doesn't matter which one you pick. Uh, well, it matters for this one because then you don't actually own it. Then we'll just occupy it. There we go. Somehow we got support of the people for doing that shady business right there. Uh, we got some extra experience. Uh, good for us. And now what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of our whole roster. Uh, the reason why is our roster is just really luck blaster and we can actually get a lot better generals on the way down. 
uh, just from the recruitment pool in the early game. Now Wang Xiu is our slightly unique character. He has 15% armor for melee cavalry from his background is just not very good. And even if we use the money to adopt him as heir, um, he's four levels away from getting all these good skills uh, that you kind of want to see. So i rather not spend the time or the money to invest in him and we'll just get rid of everyone. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to banish everyone uh, starting with the character with the lowest satisfaction. You get 800 gold back from each of them. Uh, don't worry, none of them are worth your time and none of them carry any items. So there goes everyone. Now if you didn't take the route where you made 900 extra gold by sacking and withdrawing and then Cornell still had movement, what you could do here is get rid of all his retinues and then put him on march and start headed for the coast. So you could just have him continue down this way uh, during the same turn. But since we didn't take that route, we're actually going to just pop out a little bit and move next turn. So this building right here, you could demolish for 1,200 or you can downgrade. Uh, basically, it's just the refund value. You're getting about like half price refund for the building. Um, maybe just downgrade because you actually get paid by the building for a turn. So that obviously works out a little bit better. Uh, if we had a level one county, you would have got 60 per turn. So about five turns of this building before you lose it, about 300 gold. So you kind of got a little bit more by uh, demolishing it and capturing it like so. Uh, we don't have any assignments, obviously, because Coron's out here. But if in case you have characters in the future, you always kind of want to spam this educational program. It's 75% commerce income, similar to stimulate market, but you also get 3k population growth. So it's just better than stimulate market in all aspects and it's available on all general classes so uh, just really useful you pretty much never need stimulate market but you could do both so if you have a really high commerce commandery you can do educational program and stimulate market in the same place for 150 percent commerce boost. all right so that's all we need to do here uh, let's end turn we have the downgrade going on right there we'll get attack on turn three here by huang shao's army uh, so just be prepared to downgrade it completely by then so that you get as much money as you can from this commandery. You can also downgrade this. You get 300 backs, but we probably want to do that maybe next turn. And there's no reason to actually build to try to trigger your economy grow. It's just you're never going to take advantage of this. So just kind of ignore it. It'll go away when you lose your land. All right. Uh, that's everything we need to talk about. I think we can just go on. All right. Turn two. I uh, got some characters show up. So I'm just waiting for legendary characters. Nobe has taken his first land. So this is an opportunity to showcase Trade Monopoly. So you see you have Trade Agreement and Trade Monopoly. Trade Monopoly is the one that will give you your faction-wide uh, specialization points. So these two are the same value. They're pretty much the same for everything except for you get extra uh, points by uh, using this. So always use this. And you can even offer him the food, uh, but we're actually gonna be using up the food. Uh, you can definitely trade your food away even though if you downgrade and you go to negative food you're not penalized because even though you're losing reserves where are you losing those reserves from if you lose all your land right so it's not going to hurt you uh, if you trade this food away but in this case i oh he also has a okay he started with a weapon but he has unique weapons on all his generals so he didn't equip it that's why we see it there we're just going to ask for money uh, he's not terribly rich but uh, that's totally fine we can gift him a territory? That's his capital, right? Huh. Huh. Sell it. It's giving you zero gold right now. I don't know why he can get this. Because if you think about it... Oh, it's the shape of this command. Look at that shape. That's a lovely shape. Alright. So you can get whatever you can from him uh, using this method. He doesn't make much. He's a very poor uh, faction here. Very, very poor. Let's see. Let's see what's a good amount here. Okay, that's definitely not possible. Keep this a little bit lower and reasonable. All right, maybe like 100 here. We're just trying to get as much as we can from him. Okay, that's too much.
All right, let's just do that. Uh, you can play around with numbers, but just get as much value as you can from the land that you have. You can't trade away your capital, which is a little sad, or else I would do it. But because you got this deal with him right now, uh, which will end almost immediately, uh, mission aborted, just the sequencing of the missions, you start gaining trade uh, extortion points or trade monopoly points. You get five points for each of the deals you have. So you just grow slower if you only have one deal. Once you hit this first tier, uh, you will actually go down if you don't have two trade monopolies and so forth. Uh, basically, you want to maintain about five to keep it going. All right. So with that done, got max value out of the land that we start out with. We are just hoping to pop into the water. Right here, be fine. Alright, now we're just on our journey south. Uh, Tsui Lia's army will be in the water to block you for a turn. Uh, there's really no way around it, so it's fine. We'll just let him block us. Uh, but over here, we demolish this turn to get money, 840. Uh, we won't get attacked yet. I think we get attacked during the winter end turn, so we're fine. We'll get that full value here and we can probably downgrade this for 300 that's it let's continue all right so Twilia's army is in the water he's not aggressive in the water if you actually go on land he will attack you you can't go around him uh the waterway is like one unit thick so you basically just walk up close to him change his stance in case he comes at you and you can you know retreat back but that's it that's all you can do watch him get on land it's fine uh, we tear down everything, got as much value as we can from this starting two counties here. We're going to get attacked during this turn and they're just going to take it. Now, if you don't, you want to defend and stall for a while, you definitely can. You can keep this at town and use the garrison to loop like our old guide and you can hold it for a while. But I really don't see a point. There's no need to struggle here as we are going south anyways. Uh, the only benefit of stalling is if you can defeat their army by stalling, not drawing, but actually beating them, which is a little bit more difficult, you can keep this trade route alive a little longer. Uh, aside from that, there's really no benefit. So let's continue. All right, we lucked out. Uh, Huang Shao decided to go here this turn. Uh, this doesn't happen very often. He usually just comes straight for this. Uh, but if he feels like it doing so, it's totally fine. Uh, we buy another turn off this uh, trade route here. Uh, Twilight goes to the Lumberyard, as we predicted. Now we just want to go full speed. There is no one here to stop you now. Let's start going down south. Take you about another 5-6 turns to get to where you want to go. But there shouldn't be any problems in the water. And there's nothing to do here. If you want to build a tax collection, you probably could have. And it's just if you want to get a little bit more income. And just keep an eye out for legendary characters. There's a lot of characters that start out without factions in the 190 start, so you probably can get a few of them. Um, Guo Jia, Ji Ling, Zhou Tai are all possible uh, candidates that could show up early on. Uh, even Chen Gong. So uh, we are in spring, so we do get to pick a reform. There's quite a few choices here that you could go. You can just rush for Onyx Dragons, even though you do have a nice, unique unit. But this is a good tree to rush because you're focusing on Harbor. For commerce income, you're focused on industry to combo with the commerce income. You need these for the school upgrades. And then in is also good. You can alternatively pick up this one for just the passive population growth, which is useful. And also the livestock farm upgrades useful because there's actually a livestock farm in the first commander you're going to go into down south. So that's also a viable choice. You can go over here to start investing for replenishment if you really like so, uh, because there's actually nothing that will give you immediate impact right, uh, right here on turn, uh, your first reform. But out of all these, I'm actually going to go with this one right here for a passive population growth bonus, which I think is underrated, especially if you're doing a slow ramp up as you're migrating. You can get to enjoy this uh, for the beginning. But after this, I'm probably going to focus on this tree here. I personally don't think this is worth it at all. You're going down five different or six different reforms, really. This is the sixth one. That's a 30 turn investment just for some replenishment when I could just be building up over here. Uh, even this route's viable early on because eventually you want this. So these are not going to be wasted and they can be joined together with this tree right here for the level five state workshop. So all these are good choices. Uh, you don't really need this one because you have three trade routes already from Konron's skill tree gives him one, this gives him one, and you start out with one. So maybe a fourth one isn't going to do anything for you early on. All right, 
So that's it. Uh, we're still going to enjoy this trade for one more turn. Uh, Liu Bei is right here. So we'll let Liu Bei deal with Huang Shao and we're good to go. All right, really shockingly, they're not coming to attack us. I don't know what he's thinking. He attacked the yellow turbans first, even though there's no garrison here, so it's a free take. Um, that's totally fine. It means you know, more power to you by getting the trade route going for longer. Uh, but I'm just saying that's a really rare occurrence. I have never actually experienced that before. All right, we're just sailing, sailing, sailing. All right, we want to be like over here. So it'll take us a while. We don't even see the land over there. Yeah, nothing to do. No new characters. Just continue. Liu Bei wants to sell us. Mil he wants to buy military access, definitely. So you want to do this a step at a time. First, non-aggression and make him pay you for it. he probably pay you better in cash. Um, play 200. He's poor. Two something. Ooh, 322. We'll take that. All right. So Huang Shao has finally attacked. Uh, there was no notification during the end turn because there's no garrison. So there's no fight. He just takes it. Uh, so our trade route is gone with Liu Bei. Uh, at this point, it's not available because he doesn't have any harbor. But hopefully, hopefully he captures this trade uh, fishing port. And once we get ourselves our harbor, we can actually resume trade with him, which is what we want. We want to occupy his trade slot. All right, we got some characters here. Chen Gong, like we mentioned. So you can definitely go grab him right here. He starts out factionless. All right, so that's one unique characters down. We're going to get plenty, I'm pretty sure. Let's keep going down. So you bump into uh, Sheng Xian over here. He's likely to actually attack you, uh, declare war on you. Uh, actually, a lot of these factions are likely to declare war on you instead of trade with you early on just because you're so weak, right? No land, just a single general. Uh, it's common if they come attack you, but that's totally fine. Uh, we can beat them very easily. Let's continue. All right. Dong Zhuo want us to pay him so much stuff for a peace deal. No way. All right. Sun Jian has died. Wu Gui, not interested. Continue selling. If you guys have seen the recent Yan Bai Hu campaign, uh, early game, not campaign, the early game guide, you probably notice uh, how the counties work over here. Yan Bai Hu starts out right here with a lot of counties with no defense. You can take advantage of that as corner as well, just go snatch up land. But I, I rather hide. I don't want a Yan Bai Hu declare war on us early on, which he will if he see you. He's over here, so just go down. Don't take Dong Ou, because then you'll be exposed to him. And the reason why you don't want to take this is you actually want Wang Lan to colonize it for you so that you can save a little bit of money. This costs 8,000. The salt mine that's right next to it costs another 4,000. So let him spend that money, and you can take it afterward. So we're still trying to sail down. Let's continue. Tao Tian want us to pay for a non-aggression? No deal. Alrighty, we keep on sailing. We're almost there. Oh, Guan, I think it's over here. We made it. We'll be there next turn. Uh, we'll be able to land here after we switch stances. And we'll be able to colonize that for 8,000, which we have plenty of money for. And as you can see here, even though our trade route is turned off, as though we can't trade for the money, we're still getting trade monopoly value. So this is a nice way to build this up even though we lose our land. Let's continue. Like I said, we got Declare War on by factions we meet on the way down. All right, we actually bumped into another High Empire army here. That's not going to bother us. We're going to be landing this turn. Switch stance. Capture. All right, we got ourselves some extra experience. We have a deserted commandery, so you have to build up the building first here to start building anything we have tons of cash so if you're not patient uh, and you shouldn't be really you can definitely start rushing things at least get this going so you have some sort of commerce income um, two turns I think you can wait a thousand seven hundred for two turns is actually really expensive we spend a thousand for four turns here which is not so bad get Chen Gong onto the assignment right away 3k population growth 75% commerce income. Uh, you could even recall Kuan Rong. So he comes in to boost the commerce income by another 75%. And 
And your goal at this point moving forward is to pick up, uh, you know, you can go in here and then go steal some of these weapon craftsmen from Yan Bai Hu, build up your force, or you can buy time. You're pretty much isolated for a while, right? We are currently very safe, no faction around us. So you could just spend a few turns doing nothing just by building this up, try to recruit more legendary generals as they come in, uh, enjoy your trade monopoly build up, and just slowly build this town up and then launch out your first full force uh, to take some of uh, the land over here. I wouldn't colonize like crazy. I don't see a benefit in doing that. You're just wasting a lot of money in turns. Go take the Han Empire territories here in Poyang. You start out at war with Dong Zhuo, so you start out at war with the Han Empire. And then you probably want to wipe out everything east here and just make this huge block yours. And you're going to be totally fine. Uh, it's a much better tall build location than the Shandong Peninsula over there. Just take the, uh, this is what, Jiangdong, right? The Wu territory. And then you'll be very, very strong faction moving into the mid to late game. So that's kind of our guide. We just had to get here. Uh, very smooth going. Uh, Wang Lan's going to destroy the old turbans in a few turns and then come colonize. And then you just destroy him. And then minimize your contact with a number of factions so that you can... Uh, fight them one at a time and that's pretty much it so hope you guys enjoy this guide and we'll see you guys next time bye